when your world is full of strange arrangements and gravity won't pull you through. Hello everyone, welcome back. Sorry it's been a while. I have got five videos on the go at the moment that I'm really, really excited to show you, but I'm in a bit of a mucking fuddle with them. So please give me a few weeks and you'll be seeing an awful lot, including some retro tech and some radio reviews. With that said, this is Sunday the 24th, I think, of February, and I want to just get this video out really quick because I only have this thing with me told you and I want to get this video out really really quick because I only have this thing in my charge for a few days I've got it under the desk here and I am in love with this little thing and I can't wait to show it to you this my friends is what portable truly portable take it anywhere with you DC powered television looked like in 1970 it is an absolute little dream, this thing, and I can't wait to show it to you. Now, I know there's a lot of people who like to collect and work with vintage television sets, so if I get something wrong and be a bit helmety, please do correct me down below, because I know you guys will be itching too. With that said, you're here, she's here too. Let's stop fighting around the poo, and let's do a very, very quick retro robust review. Straight out the gate, this thing from Sony, obviously, is very, very keen to stress that it is solid state. Not a single valve, and that's a tube if you're an American. None of them in sight here. This thing is a full transistor sister. That's probably why it survived so long. We've got UHF, we've got VHF, and a very, very clicky knob here for selecting your VHF channel. The side gives us some minor controls, the top two are for vertical and horizontal, and then you've got contrast and brightness down here as well. And this is a UHF tuner, which I'm not going to pull on too hard, because it's got a bit of an upward slope on this knob, although some people have told me before that can work in your favour, but the knobs on these are very delicate, so I'm not going to tug too hard on that. Round here on the back, I've got a little crack I think here, but otherwise here's your very minor controls, you'd only really need to set it up or adjust it as it aged. And it says here, look, that it's 12 volts and mains powered. So yes, you could run this off of the battery if you were, well, feeling very, very strong, I guess. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is an antenna connection that uses a 3.5 mil TRS connector. I've got no idea why Sony did that. I've asked around and no one seems to know either, but apparently that was a common thing back in the day for them. Heaven knows why. And on the side here, which is quite unremarkable, I'm assuming one's a headphone output and the other one's a line level output if you wanted to connect it to a tape recorder, which would be crazy if you were portable, let's be honest. Excuse the ring light, like I said, this is just gonna be a quick video. I've given myself two hours to make this whole thing. But you must admit, that is one pretty little thing. I am just in love with it, I don't know why. I think it looks brilliant. And yes, if you uh, tug the knob, it does sort of work. Takes a minute. Yeah, apologies for the ring light again. I can't do anything about that. CRTs are a pain in the ass to try and film. So what else have we got? We've got a bloody great antenna on here with a nice little orange cap on here as well to give us a sporting chance, which is uh, quite sweet. Or does that mean it's a fake antenna? I don't know. Otherwise, there's not a lot we can do with this because, well, in the UK, we turned our analog television service off. This receiver deals with 625, which is the television most of us knew that are a bit younger, and the old 405 standard. Now, that went off in 1985, which does make demonstrating this a bit of a pain because if I pull this knob... Hello? Hello? Look, you know me, I would not edge you for five minutes like that and then just cast you aside. This is true, honest to goodness, 405 television. Here I am. Look at those 377 active lines running down there. Doesn't it look good? All right, I'm running it with a very strong signal, but you must admit, this looks surprisingly good. I'm really taken with it, and I hope you're impressed too if you've not seen it. Impressed? You don't believe what that caused. And if you saw the absolute state of how I've had to connect all of this up, I'll show you very quickly, but it is quite indecent. Yeah, yeah, if you're in electronics, that's probably going to give you nightmares. What I'd love to hear from people below, drop a message. Did you use one of these back in the day? Did you cart around a car battery to use with it? 
Did you use it in the car? Please don't tell me about your caravan though. I've got previous on caravans and trust me, I'm not a fan. I've owned one, all right? I'm not just one of the people, I just, I just absolutely detest them with every fiber of my being. So please, no caravan chat below. I am looking forward to turning this off though, because, yep, yeah, I notched it out. The magnetoconstriction wine off of the fly back on these, it is absolutely deafening. Just something to mind if you want to have a play with one of these. So just for the moment, and my own sanity, I am going to turn it off. The main reason I made this video, to be honest, is not just to show you this really cool little thing. It's actually because I'd never actually seen 405 line television in the flesh. Now, that had all been switched off by the time I was born. And if you want to know which year I was born, every single girl I went to school with was called Samantha or Kaylee. So take your guesses down below. This is the first time that I have seen 405 in the flesh properly and it is absolutely remarkable. On a small little nine inch tube, you can't believe how good that looks. And then when you consider that it was 1926, I believe, when the, this was sort of first theorized about the 405 line television service, which is nearly 100 years ago. It was nearly 90 years ago that that was first broadcast. That is a 90 year old at the earliest television standard. It is absolutely remarkable and please, if you do get a chance to have a play of a 405 set, do it because it is, I, I'm quite taken with it and I'm looking forward to playing with it more. Sometimes we forget that people did clever stuff in the past too. And now we're stuck with things like sky glass. Absolutely fantastic. And now we're stuck with, and that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't have any. It's like sky glass. The world is full of stranger. The world is full. Definitely have any problems. So this video is meant as a little love letter to this thing and just my own tiny little love letter to the 405 line television service. I'm in 625 now, just to prove it can do that too, and you can see the difference. This video has been very quick, and sorry there are a few janky edits and things in this, but I'm trying to get back into making videos, and I just had a few spare hours, and I wanted to prove I could do something in a few hours. I am always appreciative, as ever, for anybody that wants to sit through my nonsense for any length of time. So thanks for coming along. I hope it's made you smile, and you've... Uh, learned something or had a look at something you might not have seen before, do, if you get a chance, have a play of a 405 set because they're absolutely brilliant. Thank you as well to Jason for lending it to me at the Gadget Museum and uh, also props to Stephen for the tip on the uh, using the system I audio. I'm not going to talk about that today, but that was a great tip. Thank you very much and I wouldn't have worked that out. Otherwise, there is more coming soon, lads and ladies, and I'm looking forward to showing you some more stuff soon. Cheers. <laughs>